Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to show you what I talked about last time about a dynamically building your DB um, with your when you build your application. So that way, uh, you don't have to add, you don't have to build all your structs inside uh, um, your application. It just dynamically builds for you, and then you can use them wherever you want. So, for example, in previous projects, I've had DBs that get like a uh, the last project I worked on, the DB had 267 tables. So I think yeah, I think it was 267, something like that, 270, somewhere around there. Anyway, in order to constantly keep up with that, let's say for example you had you know four or five developers working on the application, and one guy changes something in the DB, another guy changes something in the DB. Maybe he cre increases a length or something of something, or he adds a field. It can become really cumbersome to manage those those structs that that are uh, managing your 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 connection to your DB. <coughs> so one of the things that I found that helps quite a bit is first. Make sure that uh, none of your um, your fields in your DB are nullable, and then use XRM to manage it. And so that way, uh, you can, for example, um, when you store something, uh, XRM will handle the store, and you also don't ever have to worry about changes on your DB because you have this tool I'm going to show you that that manages uh, your database. Um, anyway, so there's this guy who created this thing called Struct Create. And basically, it goes through your DB and creates all your structs for you. And um, I did quite a bit, but I felt like it was kind of missing a couple of things. Um, even though it's a great tool, and this guy created it first, and it's not my creation. I did uh, fork his um, his project and modify it for myself to something that fit me a little bit better. So his might actually fit you better, um, but I feel like mine has some more features that maybe you might like better. So go ahead and check his out, or check mine out. Or if you don't like to do it this way, then you know you, it, that's 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 totally cool, man. No worries. Okay. So anyway, what is what exactly is this doing? Well, basically, what it's doing, like I said before, is it's going through your DB and dynamically building out a file for you. You'll see you have uh, some formatting out here. Uh, it basically builds a file for you. Uh, so for example, uh, well, let's use this one here. For example, we have this struct file that was that was created for me. Format this. Um, and you can see I have all these tables, right? And I can pull out this data at any point that I want to, right? And use it in my application. So basically, I can say, you know, um, in this case, we'll say var a adapters, right? And then I can say a dot id equals five, and then I can say db dot find basically a, and now I have essentially that. You know, uh, ID5 in the DB for adapters. Does, it, does that make sense? So it makes it nice and easy to um, basically build out your application. It saves you a lot of time. And you can put all sorts of cool little uh, stuff in here, like uh, this is an alias for um, XORM. What basically what it's looking for in the DB, so the ID, right? Um, and then in JSON ID and then schema ID. This is a, uh, we'll talk about schema a little bit later. But um, anyway, um, and then you can do really cool stuff like default values for bulls. Um, let me show you here. I believe. Um, where is it at? I know I have it here somewhere. Um, oh my gosh. Well. Uh, anyway, I'll, 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 when we get to it, I'll show you how to do it. Basically, you can say, okay, well, if it's a bull, I want it to be zero or one default value. It's 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 pretty cool. All right. So, for example, we'll let's go ahead and delete this guy here. Um, close without saving. You see it's gone. I can go into that project. So let's see here. Uh, CD um, projects go source um, um, projects v4 API. Okay, and then we'll say make. And that builds the DB struct. You see? Nice and easy. Pretty cool. I, I think it's pretty useful. So let me show you how to actually use this. Um, let's get rid of this project here. We'll close this out. Exit. Okay, so first thing you're going to need, you're going to need this this main.go file. So um, just click raw. And you can look at this path here. You can look for me, happily married dad. Anyway. Um, and we're going to need a place to put it. Uh, we'll put it here for now. Uh, New file. I'm gonna paste this in like so. And I'm gonna say uh, main dot go. Well, actually, let's do db. 
let's do that and put it in here. Main dot go like so. There we go. Now we need to have a config for it. So uh, let's do uh, config dot json. Go in here and grab this config like so. Config here, and we're using test. So this is basically saying what the package name is. So uh, and you say you know package db. Uh, anyway, so uh, package. It's telling what we put here. So like you can put whatever you want. You know, uh, whatever you want to do. That's basically what that variable there is telling you what. And then there's the label name, which that is. Uh, it kind of needs to stay XORM unless you're using a different ORM. So basically, it tells you uh, where did it have that. Um, Remember that, that file I had, it had the um, XORM and then it had a name for it. That That's what it's telling you right there. And you'll see it in a second. I'll show you in a second. Um, and then, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm using XORM because it's a little bit different with XORM than other ORMs. So this needs to be true, if so. Um, this is so that, that you don't grab views and whatnot. If your database is pretty complex, sometimes you, only, you, you don't really need structs for views unless you want them. So this, this allows you to select the on and off. And this also allows it to ignore nullables, so um, I'll show you what that means later on. Basically, uh, it allows you to ignore nullables in the DB. Um, I, I suggest if you're building the DB, just use this default. You know, you play around with it, see what you need, but basically just use this default uh, config. Uh, you don't really need to change anything in here unless you kind of know what you're doing, or you have a specific use case. Um, anyway, so we'll save that. Okay, now we'll just do a quick, quick, uh, quick um, test here. So we'll say uh, go run um, package db main.go and that should, did I not, uh, oh that's right, config, config equals config dot json, oh is it, uh, oh geez it's been a little bit since I've set this up. Let me go into projects before do do make file. It's uh oh JSON, that's right. Okay. JSON, boom. Oh. Um Do I have to actually put the path in there? I can't remember. G DB. That's what you get for making something work one time and then not actually use it, you know, just put it in a make file, you kind of forget how you do it. <laughs> there you go. Um, you'll see here, it generated the file. Remember we created that users table earlier? It just generated the file for us. Nice and easy, right? Okay. So, um, there we go. Um, we should be good. Um, and you'll see XORM ID here. Incrementing. It tells what table to use when you're actually using the um, struct and DB. It's nice and easy. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, delete that here. And we need to put an output um, to that. Let's see. Output. Out. Put an out. Let's go look it up again. I'm being stubborn here. Source projects. Um, make file here, and then. Uh, oh, I was doing it that way. Okay, so we'll we'll just do it that way. That's fine. Um, okay, so make file. Build. Make build db build db and this is where we take our file like this and then we say and, and oops so this way move db strux dot go to package db And that should just work. Let's say make build. There we go. And you see it built it dynamically for you. Now, of course, you can just very simply do make build like so. 
And if you really want to, I mean, it, it, you can do this if you want to. Remove. There we go. And it says make. And the project runs. Now, you, now every time you, you build your project or run your project, right, it will dynamically build your DB out for you as you go. Pretty cool. I, I think that's pretty useful. Oh, one last thing I wanted to mention. I did go in and add a, some more variables to our config just to make it a little bit easier. I mean, you don't have to do this, but instead of hard code and all that stuff, you can pass it in dynamically. That way you can build your project, create a config.ini, and then use this project multiple ways. Um, and you also see too. So in the main, I added the connect function, and then in the DB, um, I just cleaned it up a little bit. So now you know uh, you can you can use it anywhere you want. Um, anyway, thanks, gentlemen. Have a good day, and I will see you next time.